And our very special guest is DJ Atla. <laughs> Uh, the, the DJ who has so much money in his bank account. Um, apparently, he, he's now a reality TV star. Um, there are cameras in the studio right now. And like you can see the energy in him yeah. as well. I'm everything. All over. I'm everything. Man. What's going on? What inspired the stage? And, and the cameras? I want to bring back being real on radio. You'll be never. Why are you never? I'm neighbors because I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm neighbors, okay? <laughs> it's late night, it's meeting a lot of people, it's fun, it's music, it's high energy. Um, sometimes it takes a toll on your body, but I love it. What's up, everybody? I am Tabitha Shendi Baba. And I'm Josh Mpute. For those of you who are familiar with Stoop 992, we have a special treat for you today. Yes, indeed. DJ at Large is with us today in studio alongside our host, Jonathan Andrews. And he's going to spin a young mix for us today here on The Gusto Project. Let's get it. Welcome to the Gusto Project. Yeah! Where, where we talk to the artists of our time. On the Gusto panel tonight, I have Tabith Usheni Baba and Josh Mputing. And our very special guest is DJ. I think we, we in, we're in a place where we've got social media, we've got TV, we've got the internet, we've got so much going on. So listeners have a lot of entertainment um, options open to them. So radio is the only place where you can listen to somebody in real time. You can call me and I can communicate with you that in real personal, time. It's yeah. very, very personal. Yeah. So besides the music, besides the jingles, it has to be authentic. It has to be real. It has to be a conversation. And I think when you make it very relevant, very real, people, people will engage. People will tie on to you. People will tell you their deepest secrets on air, believe it or not. So uh, I think it just, needs be, it just needs to be real, it needs true. to be authentic, it mm. needs to be you. Mm. And people will always pick up on that, people will always love that. Mm. So when, 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 when I switch on the mic, I'm literally at home. Yeah. And I'm relaxing, and I'm playing music, and I'm waiting for you to get in touch with yeah. me, and then it happens. It's late basically after that. Now, 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 now Tabith, is that real? As far as I, <laughs> as far as I hear, and and like you can see the energy in him wow. as well. You know that you understand the fact that being real is like the best thing you could ever do. But um, quickly tell me as well, and the viewers obviously, what are the key skills to becoming a good host, a good radio host? Whew, it's a very difficult <laughs> question. Um, I think you you need to decide that you want to do this for the love. Um, okay. Everybody wants to do it for the fame, for the popularity, and what people don't know is that when the lights are off, when the microphone is off, there is so much work in the background. So we're up at night, we're researching, we're trying to improve on our craft. So you need to decide that this is a passion, this is a calling, you want to do it. Because when the mic is off, <laughs> that's when the real work becomes. So you need to decide that you really want to do it. You need to be very passionate about it. You need to be committed to it. You need to be willing to learn. Radio is a lot of learning. Mm -hmm. Even after 10 years, you're still going to learn something new. You know, so I think those are the biggest things. And not being afraid to be you. You know, so many people want to be a DJ Fresh or a Gav Clip. Just be you. Mm -hmm. You should always be enough. So that's the biggest advice I can give anybody. Just be you. You are enough. Now, Simple as that. Now, now, now Josh, uh, listening to that, so it's, it's very interesting because um, it's, it's a show, mm. but, 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 but it's not a show. It's, it's something very personal, obviously. It's, it's, it's very personal. How can we pick up on that? Well, I'd like to start off by saying, first of all, great set. It was <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> it was uh, awesome. <clears throat> Um, I guess one question from me would be, first of all, your stage name. What inspired the stage name? Um, so if you follow me on social media, mm -hmm. you see there's a hashtag I use called Be Extra Large. Right. The idea of being extra large is to be you. 
to be authentic, mm -hmm. to be real, whether you're overweight or you're thin or you're tall or you're short or you're black or you're white or you just be you and know that you is enough. Right. So being extra large just means that you are within your element. Mm -hmm. You know who you are, you know what you want to do, and you understand that you have dreams that nobody else gets but you, and that's okay. So the idea of being extra large is my weight and my size, mm -hmm. but it's also a deep desire to just be the best in everything I do. Whether crafted. it's me playing, whether it's me being on radio, and I wanted to inspire people to just do what they want to do with their lives. I feel like so many times we allow society to tell us how to feel, mm. what to do, what to think. Yes. Mm. And, and then you start losing yourself, you start doing things that you never thought you'd ever do. So for me, what I always try and do when I'm speaking to people is to allow them to just be there. It's so important because in this lifestyle that we're in, where there's radio, there's music, there's money, there's girls, there's brands, you lose yourself so easily. You know, so for me not to lose myself, I'm just gonna be extra large. Yeah. Extra large, being yeah. you. All day, every day. All day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now, uh, now, obviously, you didn't just one day decide I want to be a DJ. Uh, how did you end up in this business? <laughs> well, look, I was studying a BCom Law at Fitz, and while I was studying BCom Law, um, there was a campus radio called Voice of Fitz FM. So they were relaunching, coming into the market, looking for new talent, and uh, this was around 2010. I applied and I didn't get it. Hmm. That's what people wrote. I didn't get it. Like, they didn't want me. <laughs> Second year came around in 2011 and I was like, I'm definitely getting in. Sent them my CV. Um, had this intense <laughs> interview <laughs> that was absolutely a disaster. And I got in eventually. And there was about 25 of us. And say after three weeks, it went from 25 to about eight of us. So people had given up because hmm. they didn't think radio was going to be what it is. They thought it was just going to be camera and fun and microphones and they realized it's a lot of work. So ended up being, being on campus radio when I'm doing my BCom Law at the same time, trying to balance the two. Uh, I eventually finished my BCom Law and just as I finished, I then got an offer to go into commercial radio. Hmm. So I really knew they were listening to me. There was something they saw in me. So I could, I could feel that the time for me to now move from campus radio to commercial radio was coming. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I made the jump, I then decided to study further and do a PDM, a postgraduate diploma in management. Because business is something yeah. that to me is very, very important in entrepreneurship. So I have the BCom Law from Vitz, I've got the PDM, and somewhere, somehow, radio came in. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I look at my childhood, radio was always there. Um, maybe consciously I didn't, I didn't know that I loved radio so much, but every time I was in a car, I was listening to radio. Mm. Every Sunday, when I was washing the car with my dad, we'd be listening to radio. You know, on a Monday morning going to school, we'd be listening. So I grew up listening to some of these radio personalities all along, and I didn't know that they were actually molding me, they were creating this thing, and they were giving me this passion to love radio. And now all of a sudden, I find myself in 2015. Living your I'm dream. In yeah. It. Yeah. I'm yeah. in it, and I'm now on commercial radio, which to me is unbelievable. Tavis? Nice. So <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change course a little here yeah. um, because I also read up that you do motivational talks as well. And now on that, do you have a specific subject that you focus on or like do you, do you just, you know, do you change from wherever you go? Do you just find something to talk, to talk about or are you like, is your heart on one thing that you just want to spread out to everyone? Um, I think mm. it, it becomes a bit tricky because sometimes you get to a place and they want you to talk about X, mm -hmm. but the kids that are there want you to talk about Y. Mm -hmm. So I try and put everything together. I speak a lot about my journey getting onto radio, mm -hmm. the sacrifices, the compromises, the hard work that it took for me to get there. But at the same time, I also just speak generally about some of the things that as young people we're going through. I mean, youth unemployment is, is, is crazy That's in this country. Crazy. We've got HIV and AIDS. We've got student fees that are ridiculously high. So we in debt as young people. So there's so many challenges, there's so many things going on and I try to put it all together in a five minute talk or a 10 minute talk, but I don't leave it at that. I make sure they know where I am on Facebook, on Twitter. So that if they need to ask me something after, mm. they're able to. But I, I really just try and in that 10 minutes, I try to speak about radio, try to speak about my journey, and I try to touch on one of those other elements, youth unemployment or whatever it may be. So it's, okay. it, it, it just depends, eh? 
Okay. Yeah. Mm. I'm good. Josh, how can you pick up on that? Um, just going back, you used the word uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah. And I understand uh, you have a, a social media upstart yeah. marketing company called Authentic Brand Love. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about that? So the idea with Authentic Brand Love is we're now moving to a digital space. Right. So this idea of promoting products in a shop, it's dead, it's done. We're now yes. on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. So the idea of Authentic Brand Love is to take young people that have got social influence. Mm -hmm. So they're popular on Facebook, on Twitter and so forth, and then let them talk about the brands that they love and sell the brand. So we've got about 20 people doing that for us. So a brand will approach us and say, hey, we're looking to do launch a new product or we've got this campaign that we want to do. We connect them with our, 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 social, our, our social guys mm -hmm. and they're able to do it online. So that's the idea with it. But that's just one aspect that I'm moving into. There's so many other things that I want to touch and, and, and then get involved in. Nice one. Now, uh, you, okay, so um, going back to your experience before um, when, when you were one of the eight going through to a next phase and so on, um, what set you apart then, if you, can, if you can isolate one thing? And let's take away the being genuine, all of that. What is it? Is it perseverance? Is it um, character? Is it uh, just gusto? I think... If I could put it in one word, it was hunger. Mm. I was hungry. Um, it was painful for me to listen to a 5FM or YFM and know in my heart that I can do exactly what they're doing, mm. if not better. <laughs> but I needed to prove myself. Mm. I needed to sharpen the skill. I needed to put myself on that same level mm. so that people could recognize me. So it was really just hunger. Every time I switched on radio and I heard somebody and I knew in my heart that I could do it. But I knew that I needed more than heart. Mm. I needed to actually put it into action. Yeah. So that's when the hard work comes in, the perseverance comes in, the late nights come in, that's when they come in. But for me, I've always been hungry and I'm still hungry, even now. So switching it on mm. was, that's what just made me go crazy. <laughs> now, now, okay, um, and we're going to get to our last questions now, but um, what does it make you feel like when you see you having these people move like this. I mean, look at everybody. Uh, it's 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 music. It's not your music, but it's your music. Um, uh, uh, what does that give back to you? Whew, it, it, I sometimes look at the crowd and I'm thinking, like, I want to just pause this moment, mm. just pause it, and you know that whatever song you play. That song is sparking some sort of emotion in yeah. each and every person. Yeah. You hear the song and that person's like, oh my God, this was three years ago, this was going on. Yes. Oh so you know that everybody has their own memory yeah. related to the song, but you're bringing them all together at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that for me, it's, it's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable thing. You can't explain it because you know that when you play the next song, you're going to take them to another level. Mm -hmm. And that, that power and Oh man, that passion and oh, <laughs> it's, it's something else. It's such a beautiful feeling yeah. to see people happy, to see the different memories in their faces, in the way that they're dancing, in the way that they're screaming out. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you for all the flashbacks. Like I, had, I had so many. I, I just wish I, you know, I could have stood up and danced, but yeah, the chair was it was holding me down. Anyways, um, we had to be here. But anyways, um, on that, what I would love to know is, have you ever had problems with like you having to, what can I say, like pat down your creativity, especially now with your superiors at work. Like, have you had this awesome idea mm -hmm. for your show and you couldn't do it because, I mean, with radio, you already have like a format set and stuff like that. So you, has, has that ever happened to you? Um, it, it, it does happen from time to time. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you have a boss and you try to explain the vision that you want to create for the show. And sometimes they'll say yes, sometimes they'll say no. But the trick is that radio is a team sport. Although yes. I'm the only one on air, there's five other people running the show. You've got a technical yeah. producer, you've got a content producer, you've got all these people playing a role on the show. So the idea is, this is what I want to do with the show. Let everybody give you some feedback and then execute and do it. But it's important to share your idea, but to also learn to listen to critique as well. So yes, it does become difficult when you want to 
want to want to execute something on air, and you think in your mind it sounds amazing, it's perfect, <laughs> yeah. and it's awesome. But it's also important to take that critique because sometimes it might, in theory, sound very nice, but on air it's just it's a mess, mm-hmm. you know. So it's 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 just it's about growing up, and it's it's about listening, and it's about taking critique so that you can go to the next level. Now, now on that, uh, we're going to visit the YFM studios and we're going to see um, a little bit of uh, what this radio action of uh, DJ at Large is all about. Mm-hmm. Watch the Gusto Project on YouTube featuring myself, DJ at Large. Let Lusania simply search for the hashtag Gusto Project at Large.